are not universally applicable, and uh, I think it is up to others uh, to find alternatives, new ideas, better ways. But it is an enterprise that I'm recommending, not not a conclusion. Um, anyway, my propositions. Um, first, uh, uh, to underline some points, the the, the old, old paradigm and new paradigm are not alternatives. They can, they can, we can have both of them at the same time, and I think we do. Uh, the old paradigm remains. We are still subject to the power and influence of mass media, and if they, these media are still used uh, by governments, by political parties, by firms, by industries. Everyone has uh, an access to uh, instruments of power. Uh, they, they are not only not alternatives, neither is sufficient in itself as a, as a, a way of looking at the world of communication. Uh, and, uh, and both together are not sufficient. So we need continually new thinking and critical thinking. Um, secondly, as I've said, communication science is necessarily normative. We cannot hope for a, a value-free uh, medium communication science. And uh, uh, my third point, uh, again, pretty much a truism that many of you will be aware of anyway, as a scientific practice, medium communication study has to take into account uh, human reflexivity. Uh, we do not accept what is presented to us uh, uncritically. We, we, we weigh it up in terms of our own perceptions of needs. And human uh, behavior is uh, entirely unpredictable. Uh, therefore, there will be no certainties uh, from uh, reading communication science. Uh, now, finally, I think the, the key to the unity, if it is a problem, I'm not sure how, how, how if it is, uh, then it, it, it lies by way of theory. Um, the last question that I raised at the beginning of the um, relation between theory and practice I have no answer to. I am one of those who has uh, theorized and not practiced, except in a, except professors do do in some way. Uh, in, they are also supposed to be communicators, but many are not very good communicators. And I, I can't say I was a, a good professional communicator. So I, I have to admit that um, I stand. I, I would avoid uh, giving advice to any actual communicator on the practice of what they do. So I, I have little to say about that. Um, but anyway, I, I leave you uh, with those, those thoughts. And if there are any uh, questions or time for a question, then I, I'm happy at least to um, try and answer. What is the relevance of both the paradigms in India's development and the paradigms in India? Ah, ah well, the paradigms, OK. Well, that is, that, to, to answer the question, I would, I would need to have a, a, a knowledge of the situation of, of India, and uh, I certainly do not have that. Um, but, but I'm sure you know what is happening in the media all over the world are reflecting what is the situation. Yes, I am sure that is true, and uh, I can only, I, 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 I think it is, I think it is, from my, from what I know, I would say a different pattern will emerge. I think the, the pathway of development of communication systems in India is going to be quite a bit different from those typical in the national societies that I've been familiar with in Europe and, and North America, um, for, for, for various reasons, because of the rapidity and unevenness of actual development. So. I think uh, interactive small-scale communication will be much more important, and, and of course, as you, it's a much more diverse society. So we're dealing with quite, I think, quite different situations than have been dealt with in, or have been familiar in Europe and uh, and and North America and often in other countries. So I, I suspect that it is up to you to tell us, and I, and I, I'm certain that's true. What is happening? I'm very, I'm very glad that um, uh, that is that is something to to expect. Would you would you suggest some communication strategies for developing 
I wish I could. I, I can't get that <laughs> My question is that you said uh, that new paradigm and old paradigm is not alternative. They can coexist uh, together. And uh, you said again that uh, critical theories is now. But keeping in mind the triangulation and the rising uh, multi-method researches, I was just wondering whether uh, critical, there is a, like both the critical theories and other theories is a coexisting even now. And also extending to this point, your transmission, ritualistic and publicity and uh, reception models beyond that, do you see the possibility of a fifth model of media communication theories? I'm not sure if I, um, if I saw why, why it's fit. I'm not sure what the, what the first four of that term. I think uh, certainly I see the possibility of, of new thinking that will really be shaped. I, don't, I think we should try to avoid being kept with old thinking and old theories and old models. Maybe they are educative, but we, we should always be trying to transcend them in the light of current developments and, and knowledge. So uh, in that, in that, on that general principle, I welcome a fifth, I welcome a fifth theory. Yes. And the sixth. Communication theories that we teach here in our classes. So I was just wondering whether you were thinking about the fifth one, fifth model know. of communication. I haven't got that far. I, I don't think I will. <laughs> okay, yes, thank I'm you. Sir. Not for that. Professor McQuill, can you elaborate more on the central theory of communication and uh, when it is likely to emerge and what would be its benefits? This is, this is where I, I, I reach, uh, I could, I could say more, um, but I, I'm not sure it would be, be helpful. Um, the, the, in a way, I want to underline the fact that there, there is no single central theory. There are alternatives um, that may be equally useful for different purposes, but the point, point is they will, they will be theory, um, they will um, uh, relate to each other, they will uh, try to deal with new circumstances, and uh, the, the, the fundamental process of communication will underlie them. So it is it, what I was trying to, what I was thinking of and presenting was a, one stage on the way towards um, uh, a, a theory or theories of, 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 a, of a more advanced kind, but always taking into account what I think were key, key elements. So it is not so much a theory as uh, the path to a theory. That's, that's how I see it. Uh, that's as near as I can, I can give to an answer. Uh, Professor Michael. Uh, may I uh, seek your comment, uh, the way the communication tools are being used nowadays all across the world by terrorist organizations for spreading fundamentalism and radicalism? I don't think, well, if I knew the answer to your question, I think that would be, I would be in more demand than I am. But, but what I, I think, I'm not sure what the, the role of the of media uh, are, the role is probably, in this matter, exaggerated. I, I, I think the spread of um, radical ideology finds its root uh, in, 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 in many different ways. Now, uh, having said that, uh, I, do, I do see the point that internationalization of radical movements of the kind that we are witnessing now in different parts of the world, um, that crossing of borders has been much facilitated, made easier by uh, the, the availability of means of communication. At the same time, one has to recognize that the, uh, these means of, of intercommunication and spreading of ideologies uh, in, 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 in radical movements are also matched by uh, the power of authorities to of surveillance of of, uh, of, um, of collecting evidence of uh, greater knowledge of what is going on and who is doing it. So it's a, it's a continual struggle between oh, evolving technology uh, between those who are uh, using it for uh, purposes that are are doubtful uh, 
and those who are trying to um, uh, uh, control um, these movements. And uh, the, it is a give and take, it is a struggle. And uh, new, new technology would not in itself, I think, um, have been, is not exactly a cause or even a great stimulus, but it is great aid um, to these movements. Uh, and uh, to that extent, uh, we just accept it. Hello, sir. I have a question where I'm coming from a political economy perspective. And I'm drawing from the work of Toffler and Christian Fuchs, like I have followed them. So, uh, the, I the whole idea of prosumer and the critique is that uh, while using different social media platforms like Facebook, Twitter, or even WhatsApp nowadays, the content generator, the user is becoming the producer of the content and further consuming the advertisement which are being generated from her or his own content. And there's a lot of digital activism around digital labor that uh, the people, the gen user, user generated content, they're further getting into the whole idea of question, digital question, labor. Question. My question is that why aren't we getting moving towards challenging the policies which are being made by these social media platform owners? Why are we just critiquing the whole idea of this digital labor or presumerism? And why aren't we moving towards the social, uh, the policy making of these social media interventions? Well, it is a very large question. and. Uh, uh, I, I, so far, I don't think it's an answer. I, I will say first that my, uh, one, one reason why I, um, you know, I would say a reason why I retired, but a reason for withdrawing from um, uh, a, a, the field of, an active field of communication, was uh, I, I didn't really understand uh, social media, and I still don't fully understand them, but I do see, I do see your point. Uh, about the increasing uh, um, uh, tendency for people to be um, working for um, to, to by their labor, they are making content. But I'm not sure how important that is. They are doing so willingly. Uh, it is um, it is freely done, and it is it is it is not really at the initiative of those who are doing it. It is speeding into patterns that are set by the owners of, 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 of mass media often. And uh, they are, it, it is labor, it is no, not so different from the labor that is provided by those of us who watch advertisements uh, and spend uh, and become audiences for, for, um, for promotion of goods and advertising. So, uh, we, 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 well, how far? The productive labor of those who are making use of social media has a creative, innovative um, uh, edge to it, or uh, content to it, is a bit uncertain to my mind. I, I, what I observe is a, a lot of content that is fitted into the routines and purposes of mass media, for one thing, uh, without necessarily um, changing um, yeah, the, the, the uh, life circumstances of those who are using social media. But as I said already, I, I can't say I'm, I really understand them. <laughs> I, don't, I don't use them. <laughs> oh, well, so I'm not really qualified, I suppose. My question is, in this new media era of connectivity, interactivity, and individual access and dissemination of communication messages, what changes do you see uh, with communities, cultures, and definition of identities? Well, um, I wish I could answer. I don't think I see. I don't think I see an answer to your question. Um, I am. Uh, I am not. I don't know. I, I really have to say, I don't know. I don't see changes. I mean, I'm sure there will be, but what there will be, I. I I, I don't even want to guess at because I uh, I think I think of my point of human uh, unpredictability of uh, reflexivity. It's very difficult to um, estimate uh, what will be the impact and consequence of um, these changes until they happen. And of course, that is 
one of the tasks of the, the field is to, to, to record the changes and observe them and then understand them. But then, oh, clearly, it is somewhat late and we would really love to know what, what to expect. And median communication studies is not very good at that um, prediction. Uh, prediction. Okay, anyway, thank you for your questions. Good morning, Professor Maxwell. Morning. Uh, this is uh, slightly different questions. Uh, okay, do you think nowadays uh, there is too much of interpersonal communication, interpersonal mediated communication, mass communication, new media communication, but not intrapersonal communication? Right. And that's the reason why this is going to harm a society at large in future. Well, uh, again, this is where I think we're at a, at a boundary point of the people. Um, it, is un it has been a matter of uncertainty how far media communication studies is uh, able to deal with questions of intrapersonal communication. Um, uh, inter interpersonal, yes, there are this bits, the, the pattern uh, and, uh, and, uh, and the uh, focus of study. But I, 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 am, uh, I am not sure that we aren't entering into a different field where different uh, expertise is needed uh, for, for, for answering questions of the kind that you've raised. I think possibly so. Certainly in my own case, I, I feel unequipped to deal with that. But uh, it is an important issue. Uh, I've actually it's emerged from listening to everything. Uh, we are talking so much about uh, communication today but uh, and yesterday. But one of the things that I wanted to ask you that are there any real changes because most of the time we see the changes in technology but the essence of communication are really the same ever since we began mass media as such i mean would you agree or just just a passing thought on this it's uh, the only clear change is technology the tenants remain the same tenants of having a good sender good receiver good exchange and if we have that in place everything else is quite the same only technology has grown ever since. It's one of those noble questions, and uh, I, my, 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 my inclination, my tendency is to think that um, um, fundamentally things are not are not changing because of technology, and uh, we the, uh, the 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 changes that are taking place have other causes than communication. So. I, I, though I am here as an advocate of media and communication studies, I am not believing that communication is the key. Uh, there are other forces at work that are more important, and communication is one is, is often an epiphenomenon, a, a consequence. It reflects things that are going on fundamentally. So I would not. Um, uh, I, I would be very careful to. To, to think that communication is changing the world, even if it is fundamentally different from what it was a hundred years ago. So my question is, uh, what do you think about Edward Snowden, who took a great risk and uh, exposed so much the US government? So do you think in future we will have a more people like Edward Snowden? Well, I have, I have somewhat mixed feelings. Um, on the one hand, and on the whole, I am very glad and welcome um, this um, breaking out of secrecy and uh, exposure of what is happening. But I also recognize that, um, uh, that, certain, um, that certain activities require um, some degree of privacy or confidentiality and uh, there is a, a danger in uh, the, the, the danger, to my mind, being that uh, if there is um, if there is no possibility of confidentiality, then uh, key decision making and thinking retreats into secrecy, even more secrecy. So I have a feeling that in the long run, there is something counterproductive about the exposure of uh, of, of, uh, of of what are in a, in a way secrets, but in itself. Uh, very beneficial, but in the long run, maybe um, not so uh, not so beneficial. Sir, this is Varish here, and uh, on behalf of everyone present here, 
and the behalf of the organizing committee of the conference, I would like. Now we come here. We All right. Very well. All right. I just want to extend uh, gratitude to you for your time and uh, for your uh, sharing your views. And the past six months have been very fruitful in the end because after trying for so many days and so many months, we are finally uh, we are finally able to hear you and uh, hear your views and we are finally able to present you to the audience. So I, I suppose uh, this is uh, this we contribute to the technology to the <laughs> maximum. And uh, final, I would like you to sum up the final session with your last views. Well, thank you very much. And uh, I hope you have a, a very good a very good conference. And uh, I'm, I'm sure I can't be there in person, but um, it cannot be. Um, anyway, I will um, I, 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 I will say uh, goodbye. I think that's uh, we're reaching the end. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Right.